Hi team, this is George. Just wanted to go over a little bit of what we did in week two and what we're going to do coming up in week three. And a couple of the key issues, key things, not issues, key things that came up in week two is we chose our scenario for the case study. Now we're going to be working through this case study throughout the class. So we're going to basically follow Mager's flowchart and of course all the other reading that we're doing and we're going to build something for uh, employee development we're going to build an employee development plan so this is something that you can take uh, with you if the scenario was something from work or wherever it may be and that and that's our goal that you have something tangible that if you don't use this this case study for um, an employee development plan in reality, you'll know how to build one if that opportunity arises. So that, that's the hope. So the first step was you chose your scenario and then you cited key, key issues for the case study. And those key issues, if you just read through the Mager text, are consequences right side up? Are there other causes? Those are two critical elements that we always look at for um, employee development before we just jump into training we always want to make sure you know is training the answer what is the the correct answer so a lot of times today still even though people know about consequences being right side up we still see them upside down it happens a lot um, and are there other causes did something change are things just simply too difficult to do we just don't know so we always have to look at other causes well, let's jump into week three so you have your scenario and now this week coming up sunday is easter so i purposely moved some assignments around because we don't want to be uh stressing out over um easter when we should just be enjoying the the, the sabbath and the celebration uh, so that's the thought process behind that we still do have a quiz you can take that multiple times and you can take it throughout the week. We have one discussion, and that is it. So if you have to, well, I'm sorry, we also have our faith integration. But if you have time, start thinking about week four as well, because what's coming up here is feedback. And we're going to start, this is going to um, move into your case study as well, because we're going to be looking at case study of solutions. And we're going to be practicing feedback because quite often feedback is a part of a comprehensive um, employee development plan and managers have to know how to give feedback because there's ways that it works there's ways that it doesn't work uh, so for instance uh, like i like to use sp uh, sports analogies all the time as sports psychology if you want somebody to get better at doing something you focus on what they are supposed to do if you keep hammering on what they're doing wrong, then that's where the focus is. And when we talk about a focus, whether it's on the sports field or employee development, focus is where the attention is. So if you're putting all your attention at the things that are that you are personally doing wrong, then you're going to continue to do that. So we have to shift their focus to doing the right thing. And sometimes that doesn't work, but that's the, the most effective way to give feedback. You still have to have those difficult conversations and uh, go over key points that need to change, but the overall focus needs to be on where we're going. We don't want it to be stuck here on what we did wrong is where we're going and the steps that the employee is going to make, is gonna, going to take to make those changes. That's, that's the key to it. And if they have input into making those decisions about the steps they're going to take as well most likely the uh well the chances of success go up percentage wise so if they have input and if the focus is on where they need to go uh the percent wise of how well they're going to do in that plan goes up dramatically now if they're on a performance improvement plan or something like that we still want to focus on where they're going but they certainly need to know the uh, consequences if they don't focus on where they need to go. So sometimes you have the, uh, the the carrot and the stick, if you will. Both both are effective. The uh, carrot is more effective 
to get people moving in that direction. And sometimes a stick is more effective to keep them moving in that direction. It's a, uh, it's, it's a balance and we're never fully in balance. We're always uh, trying to achieve the balance. So that means just by its nature of trying to achieve the balance, we are never in that balance. So we're always uh, just trying to stay within the lanes, if you will. So that's my thought on this. So that's week three. And I just brought up week four because it's a good opportunity to sort of start thinking about that as well. And in week three, we're going to be looking at different styles of learning. And we're going to look at the solo flyer, the move and stretch, the rotational uh, assignments. I'm going to get into this. So probably Thursday, I'm going to be posting quite a bit on these different uh, things that we can do, the digital storytelling, social learning, all that. Um, so we're going to have some fun with that and, and dive right in. So have a great week.